In this video, I'll be showing you how to solve the centers on the 6x6 six six cube. Okay, welcome to the first of the Big Cube tutorial videos. As outlined in the introduction, the first two videos after the introduction are going to be showing you how to solve the 6x6, six six, and then the next two after that are going to show you how to solve the 7x7. Seven seven. The basic method that we're going to be using to solve both the 6x6 six six and the 7x7 seven seven is known as the reduction method and using freestyle edge pairing. If you don't know what the reduction method is or you know freestyle edge pairing, then I recommend watching the 5x5 five five tutorial videos to learn those first before we apply them to the 6x6 six six and the 7x7. Seven seven. So applying the reduction method to the 6x6 six six and 7x7, seven seven, we're simply going to be solving all of our center pieces then pairing up all of our edge pieces to reduce the cube to a 3x3 three three state. The first thing that we need to know for solving 6x6 six six centers is that, that there is no fixed middle center. So unlike cubes which have an odd number of layers, uh, like the 4x4, four four, the 6x6 six six also has no fixed center. So we need to know our color scheme quite well in order to, in order to solve our centers correctly. You might be wondering why the cube is in this strange pattern right now, and it's basically just to help illustrate the different types of center pieces on a 6x6. Six six. So the middle four, these blue center pieces, are the inner centers. So these four are effectively the same piece as one another and belong in the middle four uh, locations of the center. These yellow ones on the outside are the corner centers. So these belong at the corner of each 4x4 four four center grid. So the pieces in between these corner centers, these ones, are known as oblique centers. And the important thing to know about oblique centers is there, that there are what's known as two orbits of oblique centers. And what that means is for any two oblique centers, they can't necessarily be swapped with one another. So for example, we can easily swap well, it is possible to swap these two corner centers and the cube is effectively the same. But if we look at these two oblique center pieces, we can't swap them with one another. There's no way we can possibly swap them with one another. We can swap, for example, here on this cube, we can swap this red one with this one, with this one, with this one, but we can't swap this red into any of these positions, positions which have an orange center. So if we just do like an F, right? This red one just goes to here, this one goes to here, this one goes to here, this one goes to here. Unlike these yellow ones, which all switch locations with one another, and these blue ones, these orange and red centers, the oblique centers, cannot be switched with one another. And that's an important thing to understand when you're building your 6x6 six six centers for the first time. So now we have a scrambled cube and it's time to start solving it. Um, as I mentioned in the introduction, it's important that you know and understand how to solve a 5x5 five five cube before tackling a 6x6 six six because we'll essentially be applying the same sort of intuitive center building techniques on a 6x6 six six that we used on the 5x5 five five, and it's important that you're, yeah, you're comfortable with those. Because of the additional complexity and more types of pieces on a 6x6, six six, there are multiple different ways in which we can solve individual centers. However, in this beginner's tutorial, essentially what I'm going to be teaching you is building 1x4 bars, like that, to create our center pieces. So that is, for example, for this bar, this one, this one, this one, and this one, we're looking for two oblique center pieces and two inner center pieces of the same color. So let me just illustrate this by building our first bar. So for example, uh, let's, we can start out with any color. Let's start out with yellow because I see on this face, for example, I already have one, two, three pieces like that. And I just need to find one inner center to create, to create a one by four bar. And it's actually down here. So I can just move it up like that and create my first one by four bar. You will notice that because there are a lot of pieces on a 6x6, six six, there are many cases where you'll already have things built for you, and that's just part of the luck of solving 6x6. Six six. So now that we have our first 1x4 bar here on yellow, it's time to create another 1x4 bar. And again, we need to look for two inner centers as well as two oblique centers which attach to these two inner centers. So here's one of our inner centers. We can see it on this face because it's part of these middle four and the other inner center is up here. So being careful to uh, not mess up what we've already solved and attach these two to this one. So notice that this inner center is actually already attached to one oblique center. So we can do a U and then bring these up. 
like so to create a one by three. And now we just need to attach a final oblique to these one by three. And this one is in fact going to be suitable for us. So what we can do is do a U prime, move it out of the way down to here, do another U prime, move it back up. And now we can just insert the second one by four bar into our top layer. And now we have two one by four bars solved on the yellow face. So you'll notice that for these one by four bars, we built them in effectively the same way using two inner centers and two oblique centers for each of them. However, you will notice that the next two bars that we're going to build are on the outer side. So adjacent to these two, but towards the outside of the cube. And these involve uh, putting together two corner centers and two oblique centers next to one another. So let's start out by looking for some pieces which we can use. So I see we have these two and I can attach firstly a corner center to that position. So by doing an F prime and then L prime like that, I can create this, uh, this group. And now I just need an oblique center that goes here and um, one, the oblique center that goes here is in this position. So we can do an F, move it up and then insert it and now we have three by a three by four block solved on our yellow center and we just need to solve these last four yellow pieces all right so let's find the next few pieces i see that this yellow oblique center is actually on the bottom face so if we're solving on here what i'm going to do is attach this oblique to this one by doing a wide r move it across and then do a wide r prime like that and then the last two corner centers that belong with these two are uh, this one, which is already in our yellow center, which is not great, and this one over here. So what I can do is use this one and match it up up here like that. And then match this one up with these three by doing R prime U prime R. And now we've solved the first, uh, our first center on yellow. So because there are no fixed centers on a six by six, we need to remember that opposite yellow is our white center. So we need to put our white one by four bars on this face. So let's start out by building a one by four bar. I see I've already got these three. So these two inner centers and this oblique, and I can match it up with this oblique by doing R prime U prime R like that. And then I can put it into this top layer like so. Next up, I'll attach this inner center to this inner center, as well as this oblique, like so. And then another oblique came here and I can attach it and build the next one by four and then insert it into the top layer. Now I need to uh, find and solve four pieces which create an outer one by four bar. So I can use this one and pair it up with these two up here and then use this oblique center and then insert it into the top layer like so. And then finally, I've got these two and this one, which I can bring together and this one over here. So I can put it into this position and then bring it with the others and then finish off my white center. So this might get a little bit repetitive, but we essentially need to do the same thing for our next center. So for our third center, we're going to put our first two on the left and right hand side and then find some pieces. Firstly, decide which color we're going to solve our third center on and then find some pieces to help us solve those bars. So I think a decent option would be to go with red because we have these two solved for us. So we can attach this inner center up like that and then this oblique here can be matched up with these three pieces by hiding it away, U prime R. And it's important to have these uh, four centers, uh, these, these bars kind of parallel with the M axis like this, which it makes it a lot easier to work with. So next up, we're gonna build the second one by four bar. So I've got these two already paired up and the last uh, inner center here I can attach like that. And then this oblique actually matches up with these three. So I can do U prime, R, U, R prime, and then insert it up like so. Um, okay, so next up, I'm going to solve an outer one by four bar. 
I see these two already paired up together, these two red ones, and I can attach this oblique, and then I can attach this outer, this corner center by bringing it down, doing an F, bringing it back up, and then I can put it down here, just like that. And then for our last 1x4 bar on red, I've already got these two and this one, which is kind of lucky, and the last oblique center is back here, so I can do a slice move and then finish off the red center like so. So after finishing off our third center, we need to be mindful of solving our fourth center correctly. So we need to make sure and know our color scheme and know that if we have, for example, yellow here and red here, that the blue center, the blue center pieces all belong on this face. So that's the, uh, that's the side that we're going to do next, I suppose. Um, so in terms of building a one by four bar for our blue center, I see that I have these two and this one creating three of those first four inner one by four bar pieces. And this last inner center, I can attach to these three pieces by doing a slice move. Then I can do a U move and then bring it back down like so. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different for this fourth center. So previously I've shown you, you know, we've been solving these inner one by four bars first and then the outer one by four bars, but we don't necessarily have to always do it in that order. For example, in this situation, what we can do is actually create an outer one by four bar here by using these two, this piece and these two, pairing them up like so and then attaching this last corner center to these three and then bringing those across to the left hand side like that. So now we've solved an inner one by four and an outer one by four. So let's solve the next uh, bar that we're going to solve. Um, we've got these three and this one which we can, with which we can create an, out, an inner one by four like that. Then I've got these two and this one. So what I can do is do a slice move move it across, slice back, and then finish off this last outer one by four bar on blue. So now we've solved the first two centers and these next two blue and red centers. So the last two centers do get a little bit tricky as the cube sizes get bigger. And essentially what I want you to do is follow this kind of process for solving the last, uh, last two centers on four by four. So what we're going to do is again, build one by four bars but we're going to do it in a specified order. So the first thing to do is we note that we're going to be working on this front face here. So we're going to solve the front face and then of course by default this top face will get solved. So if we solve for example all the orange centerpieces onto this face then all the green ones will end up on this face anyway. So we don't need to really worry about that. Just worry about what we're doing with the orange pieces and the first thing to do is to create an inner has to be inner one by four bar on orange. And we see that we have these four up here on this top face uh, built for us already. So what we can do is do an R U2 R prime like that to create the first inner one by four on orange. Let's say for example, that we didn't have that inner one by four and we just had a different sort of arrangement. What we would have to do is try and figure out a different way to create a, a, an inner one by four on orange. Um, and there's, yeah, you, there's gonna be many ways in which we can do this. Um, one way here, for example, is I have this piece and these two. So I can use this inner center, bring it down with a slice move, move them across here, and then slice them back up. Now, once we've created this inner one by four bar, what we're going to do is create an outer one by four bar over here. So I see I have these two pieces right here and I can match up, match them up with these two. So match those up, bring them across, bring it back down. And then what I'm going to do is attach this outer one by four bar to this inner one by four bra, four bar and bring them across to this left hand side. So R prime F two R does exactly this. So that's the second step is you want to get the inner one by four bar and the outer one by four bar over on this left hand side over here. So the next step, which can still be done intuitively, but sometimes gets a little bit more difficult is to create an inner one by four bar 
over here. So create the third one by four bar of the front face, in this case, the orange face over in this position. So the way I like to approach this is to pair up the two inner centers together. So this one and this one first, like that. And then what we're going to do is attach uh, the oblique centers to these two inner centers. So this one is already attached for us and we have this one here, which we can bring up. And now we have this one by four. So we can insert it like so. And now we've solved the one, two, and three of our one by four bars on this orange face. So to solve this final one by four orange bar, we're going to need to introduce one extra technique, which I'll show you in a little while. The first step to solving this final one by four bar is to solve three of the last four pieces. So we want to solve both of these corner centers as well as one or at least one of these oblique centers. So if you can, just using this face, so this slice and U moves, solve uh, the two corner centers into these two positions and if you and at least one of these oblique centers. So for example here, what we can do is uh, attach this corner center to this oblique and move this one out of the way. Then do a U2, bring it back down. So now we've paired up, for example, these three pieces. So two corner centers and at least one oblique. Now obviously there's no possible way we can just use these moves to attach this oblique to this one. So what we're going to do firstly is just solve this one by four, uh, this, these three pieces of this one by four down here by doing RU2 R prime. And then what we're going to do is move the final two unsolved pieces into the right position. So this one and this one here. And now I'll show you what to do with this, with this case. So remembering for this final one by four, I want you to intuitively solve using this slice and U moves three of the last four pieces. So the two corners and at least one oblique. And then if you get a situation like this, or I'll show you shortly the mirror of the situation like this, you'll need to use what's known as a commutator to actually swap these two pieces. So the moves that we're going to do are like so. So it's wide R move like that, then do a U, then a slice move up here, do a U prime, wide R prime, U, and then a slice move back down. So without going into too much detail, this can be thought of intuitively as moving this centerpiece to this position, moving it across here, creating this one by four with this piece and these three, doing a U prime, moving these four back down, and then doing a U move and bringing these four back down. So that algorithm was for the case where we have this piece and this piece, which need to be swapped with one another. Now we have a situation where these bottom oblique centers need to be swapped with one another. So this piece, and this piece. And what we can do here is do the same process. So bring this one up, do a U move, but then obviously instead of slicing this one up to create a one by four here, we slice this one up to create this one by four, do a U prime, bring it back down, then do a U and then slice it back down. So those are the two commutators that you need to know to swap an individual oblique piece from uh, on your last two centers. Now, uh, I guess a handy trick to know is that if the two oblique pieces are paired up together like this for our last one by four bar, then we won't need to use any commutators at all to solve them. And we can, we can essentially solve this last one by four like we do the last one by three on a five by five. So treating this as one piece and these two as one piece, we can do something like, you know, Pair these up, bring this down, and insert them like so. So if these two obliques are together, then we don't need to do any of those commutators. Lastly, you should only be using one of those commutator algorithms for every six by six solve that you do. So now that we've solved all of our centers on our six by six, it's time to start pairing up our edge pieces.